Welcome back to Luma for Classic. I'm working on this 1974 XJ12. It's the carbureted version of the car. And I'm doing the coolant hoses. And first I thought, you know, I'm not going to show this as it's pretty much the same. But then I remember it and realized that there are a couple of hoses on the carbureted one, which you don't have on the fuel injector ones and which are actually a pain to do. I've done one side, so I'm going to show you guys that. I'm going to show you the difference between sort of the host kits for the carbureted and the non-carbureted cars and show a trick of getting all this into place, which uh, I don't know, there may be even better shortcuts, but usually you need to do fuel hoses as well. And then this seems to be the best way to do it. So let me show you that and show you a fuel injected one as well. If you remember some of the previous videos on this car, we're not doing a restoration for its customer at all. It's just getting this thing to be reliable on the road. So. There was a bunch of oily mess back here. I've cleaned that up as best as I can, and we're gonna monitor it and see how bad it leaks. If that is 40, 50 years old years of leakage, or if it comes back really quickly, then we can talk about doing cam cover gaskets sometime in the future. But uh, it's not pouring out of them, so you can probably live with it for now. These are the hoses I'm talking about right here. So you have a water rail going up here, so there's a thermostat housing and it goes back here so it goes into the head here and here there and there and there's nothing back here so that is the path that the water takes out of it and then it's a little bit different on a fuel injected car and the fuel injected car over here you have the hoses that return from the heater goes here and then you have some lines over here the heater return goes in the v on the carburetor ones here and it actually returns up there. So really, really quite different. Usually hoses are pretty straightforward on V12s is very tight. On the fuel injector car, these ones back here can be really, really tight to get on, especially over here. But uh, you have a lot more space in the carbureted one. Got a new heater valve in there that was missing. So uh, I found the vacuum line for it though. So we're gonna see if all that works later on. But usually the pipe that's the most troublesome, or the hose, in my opinion, is, let me just get that light set up for you guys, is, there we go, that one. That one right there can be a real pain. Often I like to remove um, the crankcase prevert to get to it. In this case, I didn't have to, it slid on there nicely, but Getting that one lined up with these at the same time can be a little bit of a pain. And also there's, you know, another hose this time. That went really well. However, it's very hard to explain that how tight the tolerance is here. So, I mean, there's a couple millimeters maybe between this housing and that housing here. So getting these hoses on, not the easiest thing in the world. You need to take the carbs off. I've done that on the other side, or I've already done this side, but it's, it's still off on the other side. Easiest way to remove the carbs is these four bolts over here, and then this whole manifold, or this part of the manifold comes off. You will need a new gasket up here. Not that big of a deal. And that is like one easy way to do it at least. And then when you have it off in the bench, you can replace this fuel line here, you will need to remove one of the carbs to do that. So done that on the bench. This is a new fuel line. Still going to be tightened down. I don't know which angle this is going at. But let me show you what it looks like on a fuel injected car. Oh yeah, one thing. I did find that, like I found a many V12s, it has the wrong thermostat in it. First of all, it's a 90 degree thermostat. I would never put a 90 degree thermostat in a V12. I always put 82 degrees. And it didn't have the foot down here, which let me see if I can show you guys on the other side. Over here, you can see that is the bypass. So when the thermostat is closed, it, the coolant circulates through the bypass, which this is the bypass pipe, and goes back into the engine, continuously warming it up. When it gets warm, this opens up and it flows out of the top hose, one on each side. So what needs to happen is that when the thermostat opens, there needs to be like a foot on here. It looks a bit like a mushroom and it gets pushed down and closes this off. This would not do that. 
So on the other side, I have already replaced it with the correct thermostat. I will do that on this side here, just keeping this to get debris out of there. And this is what it looks like with all that removed. And you can see the pipes here. So what I do is I slide the new hoses on here pretty far. Here is what they look like. I try to slide it on almost that far and then I make sure that I can slide it back on. And that is sort of the trick to getting this all back together. So let me show you how this looks different on a fuel injector car. We have a similar situation with the water rail on a fuel injector car. This is an HE, same on a pre-HE. So you have, here is the water rail going into the block. This is auxiliary air valve, ignore that. And then you see right down there, it's very hard to see, but right there is a metal pipe going across. So that is basically where the carbs sit, um, where the hoses. So instead, they just put a metal pipe in between and there are some big gaskets and O-rings that can also leak over there. Um, so that is the different situation. These can be replaced pretty easily in place. You just need to remove the air box uh, to do those. And then you can take one of these housings off. I like to take the rear one off and then remove those, clean that pipe up, put new gaskets on and uh, it won't leak anymore. Cause that is a pretty common V12 leak. And one way you can often tell if it's leaking there is you will see some witness marks down here that um, water has boiled because this will usually only leak when it's hot. And this gets so hot down here that it will just dissipate steam. But it will be such a small leak that you won't actually see the steam uh, or you won't hear any of it leaking out. But you'll just see, you know, dry the coolant there. But I'm going to clean up the other side there now. I'm going to replace that fuel line on the carbs and then I'm going to show you guys getting it on there with these hoses. This is all prepared now, ready to get the carbs on. I cleaned up this area a bit here, nothing fancy. It's just because, I don't know, I don't like putting, uh, I don't like working on dirty engines, so I try to clean it up as much as I can. And this takes two minutes and it just looks nicer. Um, these have been slid on as far as they'll go, so that's as much as they're sticking out on both sides. That should be enough to get the, uh, the carbs in place. I'll lubricate them just with some washing up fluid. It's apple scented, so it smells really good. And that would just be able to slide these in because I need to then slide them that way once it's all together. I have the bolts laid out, shorter ones in the front, longer ones in the back, and everything should be set. So you guys will be set up in a tripod and let's see if I can slip this into place. Just laying out the bolts here, the long ones and the short ones. Just so I put them all in the right place. And four long ones. So let's see if we can get the manifold on. The tricky part is sliding it onto it without disturbing the gaskets I just have sticking on there with Highlander Blue. That's one side on here, and let me see if I can get the other side on. We're almost there, just sort of pinching the hose a little bit. Sorry, you guys aren't seeing probably everything here, but you can understand the hose has pinched over the end of it so I'm just trying to loosen that up a bit so that it will come on. I think that might be it. 
Yep, there we go. Now I just need to line up some of these bolt holes. I'll do that one at a time. I think this one's actually coming in nicely. I can take it off again later to put this thing on, but I'm just trying to get them started so I don't ruin the gaskets because I don't have any spares. I just had ordered four of them and didn't realize or forgot how tight it is. So next time I'm actually going to order a couple spare ones. They're very, very cheap. Because um, I almost ruined one on the other side. But, yeah. That's pretty much it. So I am going to continue tightening these down. Then the hoses over here, I can just slide them sort of back and forth. This one's in a pretty good spot. That hose needs to slide more in that way. And then the hose clamps can be tightened. And then it's just fuel lines over here and all of that but is that this is the tricky part that's a little bit different on the carburetor v12s compared to the fuel injected ones all right that's all in place now all tightened down here i also put the thermostat housing back the last one so really what's left to do now is the top hoses and a couple small hoses over there that's really straightforward fill up the coolant system i got new caps for it but uh, I want to show you guys just these little hoses back here that they're a little bit tricky to get to, but very, very important to change if you have a carbureted V12. Anyways, that's it for this video. We're getting very close to the owner picking up this car. It's really fun because he's never actually driven it when it's worked as it should. So that's going to be really fun. One thing left to do is the rear suspension. Um, everything is fine, except that when I tried to lift the car, the suspension stayed on the ground. So... The mounts are completely shot. I'll show you guys in the next video how you can replace that in place. It's a little fiddly, but it's very important to check those mounts so you don't so you don't go out drive and you know hit a bump and lose your rear end. Anyways, if you like this video, please give a thumbs up, share it with your friends. If you're not already subscribed to the channel, please do subscribe to the channel. It really does help out a lot. Until next time, I'm Adam. This was a little bit of a classic. I'll see you soon.